This is Jordan Peterson in 1996 lecturing at Harvard. Culture determines how your brain works. Now, it's and this is Jordan Peterson discussing the same ideas at the same level of intensity when he made it onto the mainstream in and around 2016. It's an open question to what degree systemic bias plays in... 20 whole years later. And further to that, he said that he started taking his ideas seriously and began writing his first book, Maps of Meaning, The Architecture of Belief, back in 1985, which was over 30 years before he made it onto the mainstream. Charles Darwin faced years of hardship, scrutiny and criticism in the lead up to publishing The Origin of Species when he was 50 years old. And at that point, he had no idea that his life's work would become one of the most agreed upon biological theories that over 150 years later, still being taught to dickheads like me. Robert Greene always knew he wanted to be a writer, right? but throughout his 20s and 30s, he had to dabble in jobs in Hollywood and journalism until he eventually wrote and published The 48 Laws of Power when he was 39. And now he's one of our time's most prolific and acclaimed writers in the topic of human nature. You never know when the skills you're developing when no one is watching will be needed on the stage of your life. It could be in a year, it could be in five years, it could be in 20 years, or even after you're dead. But as long as you continue to improve, your time will eventually come. Because at some point, you'll be so competent at what you do that you'll be, as author Cal Newport wrote, so good they can't ignore you. Because the only difference between grandeur and delusions of grandeur is the world agreeing that you're good enough. It has nothing to do with your work rate or the passion that you have for what you create. And I think this is a very important lesson for young, ambitious individuals like you and I. You're not unsuccessful or a failure or lost in life. You're just early. And maybe your definition of what success looks like needs to be redefined. Everywhere we look online, we see people that have apparently already made it, right? They might be our age or even younger. And this creates an unconscious expectation that we too need to have made it because we so desperately want what they have. But what you probably don't want and what you definitely won't see is what it took them to get there. Whether that's 30 plus years of writing and thinking about the same ideas or going viral and building an online business as a teenager. But it's tough, right? I won't lie. It's difficult. This is something that I battle with on a regular basis. The constant unconscious drive to make it, especially as a young man in the modern world, and especially with the fact that the normal path of you get educated, then you work for somebody else, then you retire and die, absolutely terrifies me. But the solution to me appears to not be just continuing to rush towards becoming the person we think we should be, but instead reshaping our idea of what making it actually means. In 1985, when Peterson started taking his ideas seriously and, and writing his first book, he wasn't thinking about how in 30 plus years time this might make him one of the most influential intellectuals of the 21st century, right? He was just so fascinated and so invested in these ideas. He wanted to try and dig down to the root of some answers, right, to those questions. Really iron out some clear results to benefit the way we think about the world and about each other and about culture. And he would do that, even if it took hours of writing and thinking and learning. And from our modern perspective, JBP didn't make it until 2016, right? until he burst upon the mainstream. But with my new theory that I want to lay out in this video, I think he started making it back in 1985. And that's because he found a worthy purpose for his life's work. He was so invested in these big ideas that he felt he could work on them for the rest of his life, right? The satisfaction of curiosity and the way it developed his worldview was extremely meaningful. And having an extremely meaningful purpose is a better idea of what making it means than just material wealth or status. So my question to myself is, Joel, what are the ideas that fascinate you deep to the core? What is the work you'd be willing to do every day for the rest of your life? And what pursuit feels like a purpose that gives you enough meaning to stay strong under the weight of your existence? And if you can figure out at least a whiff of some answers to those questions, then I think you've made it because you know where you're going. You're no longer lost in life, right? The narrative of your life 
has a structure. You have stuff to do, not just stuff that you want. And although the work won't be easy, the difficulty will be worthwhile. And the great thing too is that when you find the thing and you work at the thing and you get so good at the thing, the world will eventually turn around and pat you on the back. But at that point, you won't need it. I love this bit where Alex Hormozzi talks about how for many years or even decades, it will be only you slowly applauding what you do. And then when eventually more people show up and start appreciating your performance, you won't even care, right? Because they weren't there when you needed it or when it truly mattered. So stop giving so much of a shit about what the outside world thinks, right? Find your thing, do your thing, and love your thing. And even if it's only you slowly applauding for a long, long time, you'll know that it was a performance worth spending your time and your life doing. Thanks for watching. But on a serious note, the content is very good. Very, it makes you think about yourself and your life differently.